In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the calculus proof of consumer theory budget lines and indifference curves. I'll be using the Lagrange multiplier, but in Texas we call it Lagrange, as in ZZ Top. You can find the entire playlist on consumer theory below. On the y-axis, we plot quantity of good y, and on the x-axis, quantity of good x. And I'll put the budget line in, and an indifference curve. And that's the optimal level of consumption. And anywhere along the indifference curve, utility is constant for a consumer. But they're going to consume right there. A consumer would love to consume on that indifference curve, but they're constrained by the budget line. And the reason they don't consume on these other points, there or there, is because they can maximize their level of utility by being at that point. And what I'm going to show you is, is that the slope of the budget line, or the ratio of the price of x to price of y, is equal to the slope of the indifference curve, or the ratio of the marginal utilities. And I'll be using some calculus to show you this. My budget equation, I'll write that in black here. Actually, let me, let me put that in color. That's better. It's easier to see and read. And I'm going to say that utility is a function of x and y for the indifference curve. Again, I'm going to use a Lagrangian multiplier. I'm going to use the symbol lambda. And sometimes you'll see this fancy L. And I'm going to demonstrate and show that's the where the consumer maximizes utility with a budget constraint. Again, maximizing consumer utility constrained by budget. I'm going to focus on the budget equation first. I'm going to move everything over to one side of the equation or set it equal to zero. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract everything highlighted in yellow from both sides of the equation. On the right hand side all that cancels out. That's why I subtracted it. Equals zero. And on the left hand side I have income minus the quantity of x times the price of x minus the quantity of y times the price of y. I'm going to set up another equation and say that the utility, I'm going to say z is equal to, that utility is a function of x and y plus lambda times the constraint. And I'll take lambda time each one of these terms by income times xpx and y of py. So the consumer wants to maximize utility, which is that part of the equation, constrained by budget. Let me move that up right there. I have z is equal to utility as a function of x and y plus lambda times income minus lambda times the quantity of x times the price of x minus lambda times the quantity of y times the price of y. I'm going to take three partial derivatives and I'll do this one at a time and I will go slowly. I'm going to take the partial derivative of z with respect to x first. I look for any of these terms with an x so there's one there and there's one there. I can ignore the other terms without an x. So the partial derivative with respect to x is equal to the partial derivative of u with respect to x. How does utility change when the quantity of x consumed changes? And the partial derivative here is the derivative of x is just 1. So this becomes negative lambda times the price of x. The next partial derivative is the partial derivative of z with respect to y. This is equal to the partial derivative of u with respect to y. In other words, how does utility change when the quantity consumed of y changes? I can ignore the terms that do not include y. I'm left with that term there. The derivative of that y is 1. 
So I am left with negative lambda times the price of y. And I'm left with one more to do. And I guess I really don't need to do this, but I'll go ahead and finish it up. So the partial derivative with respect to lambda is equal to, there's no uh, lambda term there, I can ignore that. So the derivative of that lambda is 1, and also that's going to be 1 too, and 1 again. So I'm left with, in the end, m minus x p of x minus y times p of y, something like that. Now I have three equations. I'm going to take all three of these equations and set them equal to 0, because remember, we're trying to max min. We set it equal to 0. Now I'm going to work on each of these equations. Let me move them up here like that. These two equations on the left both include the term lambda. I'm going to solve for lambda in both of those equations and then set these two equations equal to each other. I'm going to work on these equations one at a time, so let me start with this one on the far left. I'm going to add lambda p of x to both sides of the equation. Those cancel out, and I'm left with the partial derivative of utility with respect to x is equal to lambda times the price of x. I want to isolate lambda, or solve for lambda. So I multiply both sides of the equation by 1 over the price of x. On the right-hand side, there's price of x cancel, and I'm left with that. Now I'm going to work on this equation, and I want to add lambda times the price of x to both sides of the equation. And of course, now these lambda price of x cancel out on the left-hand side of the equation, and I'm left with the partial derivative of utility with respect to y is equal to lambda times the price of y. I'm going to solve for lambda. So I multiply both sides of the equation times 1 over the price of y. Those cancel out. The prices of y on the right-hand side cancel out. So I'm left with this right there. Now I have two equations. I'm going to set these two equations equal to each other. Since they're both equal to lambda, I can set them equal to each other. Like that. I want both these partial derivatives, that one and that one on the same side of the equation. And I want the prices also on the same side of the equal sign, or same side of the equation. So I multiply both the left and right hand side times the price of x, or p of x, the green p of x. So on the left hand side they cancel out. And on the right hand side I'm left with p of x over p of y, or the price of x over the price of y. I'm going to rewrite this over again. So it's nice and neat. Now I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by the partial derivative of utility with respect to y like that. And those cancel out on the right hand side. And I'm left with the price of x divided by the price of y. And this is equal to the ratio of these two partial derivatives, like that. And here's all the steps. I'll put them all back in. Oh my god, that looks nasty. Anyway, hopefully you can follow along. It turns out that a consumer will maximize utility where these two slopes are equal. The slope of the budget line and the slope of the indifference curve. And you'll see it often written like this, where these is equal to the ratio of the two marginal utilities. And this is equal to the ratio of the prices. As always, share the knowledge, share the love, share the video, sh share on Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. Links to the entire place below. Questions, comments, please, and don't forget to subscribe. If you've never heard the song, LaGrange by ZZ Top, I would encourage you to Google it and watch the video.